I've completed two courses on designing a floating point unit. The first course was covering floating point numbers and the conversions between the floating point binary to the decimal and also back again. And the second course covered the multiplier design in Logisim. So those two courses are up and are live now. The third course that I'm working on just now is the adder and subtractor. Now, while I work through those courses, I'm actually going to be um, heading off into another area that I'm interested in, which is uh, machine learning. So I'll be covering this book here, Hands-On Machine Learning with Skykit, Learn, Keras and TensorFlow. Now, I'm not even sure whether I'm pronouncing those correctly, but that's what I'm going to be working through over the next few weeks, along with the adder and subtractor. So let's have a little look at the two courses that I've completed and we'll just show you the, uh, the bare guts of it just to give you an idea of what's there. So the first course is on floating point numbers and I've got a tool that I created here and it's created in VBA and it's covering the binary to decimal conversion and the decimal to binary conversion and also putting the two of them together into one spreadsheet. So let's have a little look at this just now. I'll get rid of this image here so that we can see the full screen. So we head up and into this one here, decimal to binary to decimal annotated. So we click on that and this is the conversion tool here. So it allows us to put in whatever floating point number that we want to put in and it will automatically do the conversion process. And now you can see the conversion process taking place just down below. So that allows us to have a quick conversion and helps us to understand how we get through the conversion process. And you can clear it and just start again. So that's one of the tools that I created. The second tool is the decimal to binary conversion. This is the decimal to binary conversion here. So if I put in the numbers, you'll see that I, it goes through and it creates the, the full uh, decimal to the binary conversion and it shows you how we work through the algorithm in order to get the final binary number here up at the top. Now the third tool that I've got here is just called floating point converter and what this does is it puts the two tools together so back to back so the top half of the screen here is the binary to decimal and the bottom half of the screen is decimal to binary so for example, I could put in the number uh, 0.1 and it converts it here. Now what I could do is I could copy the, this number here up into the top one so I can put it into the binary to decimal conversion and I should get the same number back. And you'll see the number being built up here as we copy the ones through. But you'll note we're not going to get exactly 0.1 because it's an approximation and that's our approximation here and the point of doing this and putting them back to back is that we can see here that we want to have a, an exact value for our 0.1 but the actual value we're going to get is this value here and whenever we convert this value back into the decimal you can see that this is the actual value it's going to be represented and it's going to be out by this factor here and this is going to be our error factor. So this covers the main thrust of, the broad thrust of what I've done in the first course. But I've also covered all of the types of conversions. Um, so we're looking at uh, doing subnormal as well as uh, normal, normal numbers. So let's go ahead and we'll have a look at the second course where I cover the multiplier design. So again, I created a tool that would allow us to work through the multiplication process. So I can click on the floating point multiplier here and it's going to bring up the tool. So in this tool here, we're going to have the X input and the Y input and we can put those in as the decimal numbers. So for example, five and seven. So whenever you put the five in, it changes the number here to the 32 bit binary floating point number and the number 7 is this number here 
So this is our x and our y in decimal, this is our x and our y in the floating point binary, and this is the answer, which is our final multiplication. Then it's the answer 35. So we can change these here and we can put them in whatever values we put in, and you see it works through the multiplication automatically. Now you can also put in it in terms of 1e to the minus 20, say for example. And again, it's worked through that multiplication. And we also get the multiplication coming out in the hexadecimal, which is quite useful. And it also tells us whether we're multiplying together uh, normal numbers or subnormal numbers. So for example, if I was to copy this and paste it in, you'll see we've got a normal times a normal here, but the answer is going to be subnormal. So that's quite handy for uh, to allow us in, or in order to allow us to debug the uh, program and make sure that it's actually working correctly. Now that's one part of it. The second part of this was the actual multiplication tree. So I built up the entire multiplication here in the Excel VBA, just in order for us to see exactly what's happening here. So we're going to have the X and the Y value getting multiplied together. And it works through the full multiplication and you get a 48 bit answer here at the bottom. And we've also worked through a little part here where we add the exponents together to get the correct answer. So it works through the exponent addition and also the multiplication of the, the significant or the mantisa. So that's quite a handy tool to use and it's very useful to help us understand the multiplication process. So let's go on and we'll have a look at the actual multiplier in Logisim. So this is the multiplier here in Logisim. We have the input x, we have the input y, we multiply it together in this multiplier and we get the output x times y. We've also got a few flags here that help us understand exactly how it's working. We have over at the left hand side the flag that tells us which type of numbers we're multiplying. So for example, we could multiply a normal with a normal and get a normal result. We could multiply a normal with a subnormal and get a subnormal. Normal with a subnormal giving a normal and normal with a normal giving a subnormal. So those are the four cases that we take care of within the multiplier. And we have the output flags here, so we have a not exact flag, so it tells us whether the multiplication returns a value that's a not exact value. That is, it can be represented exactly using the 32-bit uh, floating point binary. And we've got the not a number flag here. We've got an overflow to plus infinity, minus infinity, and also we've got the underflow to plus zero and minus zero. And these flags turn green depending on the output here and also the inputs. So for example, I could change these here and I could put in some just some random values. And you'll see that whenever I put the random values in, you'll see at the bottom here, we've got the output x times y. So this is the output in the hexadecimal. And of course, the inputs here I'm putting in are in the hexadecimal as well. So for example, this number here we've multiplied together. It's a normal times a normal giving a normal result. It's a non-exact result. And this is the final result here. So we can drop down inside and have a quick look down inside it. But the entire design is completely uh, described within the course. We're going to have our X and our Y inputs, and we're going to have our final output here. So we've got to split the inputs into the sine, the exponent, and mantisa, and we split them up in here. We then get through the exclusive OR, which takes care of the sine value and then we go through the exponent which is the exponent field here and also finally we're going to go through the multiplication which is done in this area here. We've also got the special cases which is taken care of within this block here and the final outputs come out here. So I could just drop down into a couple of these to let you see the shifter here. So that's the shifter. You can't see the entire thing, but I'll zoom out a little bit so you can see it. So there, there's the shifter, and I'll head back up. Again, the whole thing is going to be explained within the course, and the special cases took a bit longer than I had anticipated, and there's a bit more involved in it than I thought there was going to be. But we've got different sections here, so we get through all the comparators here. 
and we'll just head up to the top level again and you can head back down into this section this is the test section so we're going through and testing the actual values and finally we can head up and we'll just head into the final section here within the special cases which is multiplexing it onto the actual output so there's quite a lot involved in that section but it's all explained within the video series and I'll also go through all of the rounding and uh, you can see the entire process of the entire multiplier working and I go through it in minute detail so that's covering the second course as I said the third course I'm working on just now which is the adder and subtractor and it's going to take another two or three weeks to get that finished but in the meantime as well as I said I'm going to be working through my uh, other book here which uh, I'm really keen to get started on so that's all for this video thank you for listening I'll get you in the next video goodbye